Hello and welcome to the Performance Podcast for Monday the 29th of April 2019 and joining me on this edition, Steve Withers. You people are so petty and tiny. Kaz Harlow. That's my secret, I'm always angry. And Ed Sally. Does Mother know you weareth her drapes? Welcome to the podcast, there's no podcast next week. Just get that in here now just so you're aware and you don't you go looking for us. This is a one-off podcast in between two bank holidays basically and um, so yeah it's a bank holiday next week so uh, we're having all the bank holidays this year so if it's a bank holiday there's no podcast that's easy on work to rule. The yeah bank holidays are the same every year but uh... well, yes it's a movable feast literally yeah. a movable feast it is yeah uh, and, and, and it's we, have... that we are recording on the sunday we're on the friday it never used to matter so much you know we sort of would yeah. fart one out anyway but now sunday evening it just messes about with stuff so not yeah. happening Ma- mainly drink yeah, isn't that right, Ed? Although you drink on the podcast, it doesn't really get in the way. Makes that, that <laughs> There you go. Uh, right, so anyway, it was Easter last week and, and we haven't been around for uh, for a couple. So, uh, Steve, you must have done something interesting. Um, well, I sat in the garden, enjoyed the weather and watched some films. <laughs> that was it. In no particular order. <laughs> in no particular order, yeah. Yeah, you are the Steve Davis of the podcast, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, do you know what I would quite like to have have have, have, a, have a drink with Steve Davis? I think he's much more interesting than uh, than Steve. Than, <laughs> there is that possibly. <laughs> His record collection is apparently a thing of absolute. Wonder, yes, so. I, I have heard that you know, reinforced yeah. floors and everything because of the weight and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. and the DJ as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So uh, good, so good anything something. interesting that you watched, Steve? Oh, uh, yeah, what did I watch? Mortal Engines, which, having seen at the cinema, I knew wasn't a great film, but is a bloody amazing-looking and sounding disc. Oh, all's Aquaman. forgiven, then. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, Aquaman, again, not a great film, but a bloody looking, amazing <laughs> looking and sounding disc. Uh, Alien, whew, that was awesome. Uh, um, yeah, we'll come back to that, obviously, a bit later on with our roundup of discs, but yeah. It's not on your list, but it did come out, didn't it, or recently, or last week? Uh, yeah, that, it, 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 uh, Monday, so, yeah. Yes, uh, that looks awesome. And um, what else? Oh, uh, again, another crap film, but uh, <laughs> Fantastic Beast: The Crimes of Grindelwald. That looks and sounds fantastic as well. Why are all these films crap? Because <laughs> they're putting all the effort they into the... a decent film that looks and sounds amazing. <laughs> Before obviously... this podcast kicked off, Steve was reflecting on his own mortality, and it's telling that he's just less especially spent just a week watching Tat. It's a week <laughs> you'll never get back. It doesn't matter how vivid the HDR was and how crisp it was, you still sat there and watched shite because it was sort well, of... Well, hang on, hang on. Let, let's not have a go at Steve for that. We all know what Kaz has to put up with. This yeah, is true. But pretty, Kaz is, Kaz is not continuously thing. banging on about his own mortality. <laughs> you know, he's, he's accepted that he's doing interesting things with the time allotted on this earth. <laughs> you know, his decision. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Ed, what have you been up to? Uh, Easter was relatively quiet for me. I have had some scheduling issues with work and things so i am uh going like the clappers at the moment just trying to keep uh, the wall from the door uh today i <laughs> took a bit of a punt and took my son to the model craft 2019 uh modeling expo at the milton Keynes stadium um <laughs> which uh had some interesting facets one it always makes me feel vaguely better about my industry um, you know, it, it's a terrible thing to say, but it, it does make me feel slightly better. Yeah, uh, if nothing you're else, you're not quite as geeky as as the other side is what you're saying. We're not quite as close to death. Um, I mean, it's a close run thing. I would say that we have a better spread of um, a, a vaguely better spread of age and ethnicity in in our line of business. Pretty much the same same very small numbers uh, of uh, of people who don't identify as men. But um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the work on show was of staggering qu- of quality. It's just beautiful, beautiful things. And uh, I, I, I admire the people that have the patience, the fortitude and the skill to make it. Uh, but in some regards, I'm quite glad that I had my son with me as an excuse because we, we sort of bombed around <laughs> it in 40 minutes and then went off for some lunch. But he was free to get in. I was a fiver. I considered that to be a, a fair exchange. So yep, that sounds, was, sounds that was like good. great value. Um, I haven't been watching um, films in the same manner as Steve. I've watched a bit of television, um, so on and so forth. Listened to a load of music. Uh, I was saying before the podcast came on, uh, it was the uh, Vauxhall Club Day at Santa Pod today, the Sunday. Um, And um, I I don't want to sound combative or argumentative as, as a Ford driver, but my God, it was a cavalcade of sadness coming back down the road. 
uh, after that. So uh, I don't regret my, my, my choices there. Um, and yeah, I've just got to do, essentially, I now have to work absolutely flat out every single day until I go to Munich on Wednesday, the 8th of May. Hopefully I can get everything done in that time. So yeah, that's me. Oh, is it as close as that, is it? To, uh, oh yeah. High end. Okay. Excellent. Dusting off my lederhosen as we speak. Yeah. Up for some German sausage. Yeah. Always. Okay. Kaz? I got to spend uh, a really lovely, sunny bank holiday weekend with the kids, which was really nice. We went out to Nat Trust, and um, and it was really nice to get out, you know, properly get out. What's your Nat Trust uh, uh, place of of, of preference? Oh, where did we go? The one that's uh, just beyond Pangbourne? Uh, I sort of know. Yeah. If that helps, I don't. I can't remember what it's called, but it was. I should know what it's called, but I, I don't. I don't do stuff like that. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not the Nat Trust organizer. Or are you member. a member? No, my parents. I am. I am. But, um, I make no bones about it. I have. Ex- I've, I've settled. I'm sorry, I've settled effortlessly into middle age. National Trust membership on point. So uh, it's, it's actually worth model it. Model shows. Yeah, Steve yeah. It's and... coming because the kids absolutely loved it. Uh, we, yeah. we had a fantastic, we had several Easter egg hunts, which was really good. We set up our own and we watched all of us as a family, which is really rare, um, like a succession of films because there have been some really good uh, PGs recently, <laughs> like Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse is a brilliant film. Yeah. It, it, really is, it is nice, yeah, though, to, to, have, to have shared interest with the Austria. I mean, my, mine, uh, increasingly enormous fan of anything with an engine and... I have to be honest, he's coming down on the music side rather than the visual side as well. Is it not so. time then, Ed, to introduce him to the Fast and the Furious? <laughs> I think, just based on the slightly regressive attitudes towards a number of things, that the original might be a couple of years away before we do that. But um, <laughs> he, um, well, you could watch them in reverse then, and they get progressively worse. Actually, that's an interesting. That must have, that might potentially work, although that might be a bit memento esque in terms of just how <laughs> not, that, how that flows. Not given the already tortuous, convoluted. No, I suppose uh, not. Chronological order there in any way. Competition time. Um, loads of competitions uh, on the go at the moment. Um, so why don't you tell us all about them, Kaz? And we can uh, win a copy of Master of None season one. It's a it's a pretty funny comedy and it's also bite sized. Uh, re- the reviews up. That closes thirteenth of May. Criterion's April titles. I, I can't even remember what they are, but one of them I'm pretty sure is um, Last Temptation of Christ. It's literally uh, it's like lo- it's like Forrest Gump. It's a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, you've got to assume that at least one of them is going to be peanut brittle and you aren't going to want to do anything with it, but something will be quite tasty. So I, just go I in for it. Criterion do pretty well. I'm going to have, hazard a guess that it's Detour, Oh Hazard, Balthazar, and uh, Last Temptation of Christ. It's worth it for Christ alone. I mean, it's really... that's That makes the box set. Um, Alien on 4K, that was quite a coup, so awesome. that closes 8th of May. Uh, everyone's going to be on all over that. Stephen King's Cujo, uh, that's... Did you know uh, he doesn't remember writing that book? I'm he was sure. so drunk at yeah, the time. Yeah, I'm sure. He doesn't remember writing Cujo. <laughs> but I can't say that uh, that would make any difference to the quality of an adaptation because his is so hit and miss. And I, I'd go with Mrs three times to every one hit there was a period in the 80s where they were there was just you know um, adapting anything including a shopping list and i think we're going back to that now yeah we, we like are netflix <laughs> is, is just doing anything that's got the word stephen king attached to it um yeah anyway, so sorry. so yeah you might might want to check that out i don't know whether we're going to cover that they still haven't sent me the disc uh and replicas keanu reeves sci-fi went all kinds of wrong so you can check out that train tra- train wreck <laughs> um Seventh of May. You lucky winner, you. Uh, there's yeah, also yeah. one Woo! which is going up on Monday, which is 303 Squadron, a uh, Polish-funded film. Um, it's they, they did a, a UK one, Hurricane. Yeah, it's the same story. Very but good. It's, I, I have no idea why they do these two films at the same time. Let's do two White Earth films, two Asteroid films. They're always doing that. Yeah, always doing but that. two films about the 303 Squadron. It's so niche. Do they um, use Everybody Needs a 303 by Fatboy Slim at any part of the soundtrack? No, but it would have, oh, made, it better it would have made a huge amount of sense, wouldn't it? It would have been a bit niche, it but yeah. 
Oh, so, I think they're missing a trick anyway. So. All competitions are open to eligible AV Forum members resident in the UK except Phil. Okay, and any uh, competition winners? I know in the running order I've put none and then I've listed some. So <laughs> I just yeah, forgot I to delete none. None then, yeah, that's fine. No, there's <laughs> Rigman won uh, White Reindeer, uh, Grey Bell won The Bouncer, and Pocket Money won Pet Cemetery, which was another 4K disc. It's Pocket Monkey, not Pocket Money. Pocket money. Sorry, pocket monkey. <laughs> there we go. Okay, uh, and just before hardware news, obviously, uh, sponsor message time. If you want your eight craft beers for free along with a magazine and a snack from beer52.com forward slash AV forums, the deal is still going on. The postage is £4.95 instead of £5.95, and all you pay is the postage for your first order. The case is free with your beers and your magazine and snack. If you want to uh, continue with it, it's £24 a month on a subscription basis for more more craft beers. It's basically a craft beer um, sampler club type affair. Um, Ed's done it in the past, and, and Ed quite enjoyed the, uh, the the sample of stuff that was. It in was the like bundle. the Criterion Collection. Again, there were moments of brilliance, and there were things that were less brilliant. But that's the whole thing. It should, if you go with it, and you actually, you know, drink the beers in the way they suggest, either chilling them when required and not when they're not, and so on and so forth, you should at the very least expand your horizons about what you enjoy, what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy. Yeah, And if you don't enjoy it, after your, your free case, uh, having paid the postage, you can cancel anything. Uh, or, or you can pause your membership and come back whenever you like. If you like light beers, there's a light case. If you like dark beers, there is a mixed case. And like I say, beer52.com forward slash AV forums to sign up for the deal. So go and try it out. And that concludes the sponsor message. Hardware News is next. Okay, so moving on to hardware, uh, we'll come to some reviews in a moment. Again, it's uh, it's music heavy, but don't fear, the TV reviews are coming. Steve's looked at a few TVs, not for us, but for other people. Once I've seen them, which will be very, very soon, we will get into them in, in quite some depth. I've also just heard from Stacey Spears, uh, so from Spears and Munsell. I uh, got an email today saying that the disc image has been sent to Sony for his new disc. That's expected in June, so we're going to have Stacey on the podcast to talk about that. And both Steve and myself have had samplers of the disc. And I've got to say, it's an absolute fantastic uh, tool for evaluating yeah, it's your, really useful. your TVs and, and so on. So uh, so that's coming up in June. So look forward to that. Like I say, TV reviews and stuff is coming up soon. I've been doing lots of comp- loads of comparison stuff. And basically, the thing that takes the time with comparison stuff is, is, is setting up the TVs and taking them down, setting them up and taking them down. And I don't know about you, Steve, uh, when you've used um, the equipment here to, to split and all the rest of it, but sometimes it'll lock onto the signal, sometimes it sometimes won't. Sometimes it won't. That's and, HDMI for you, isn't it? <laughs> and you spend forever going through. But yeah, some interesting results there. Um, and like I say, everything's come up soon in videos and all the rest of it. But this week, it was a short week with obviously Easter weekend and then I was in London on Thursday and I, the reason I was in London was at the invite of uh, Bowers and Wilkins to go and have a look at the new formation wireless system. Everybody is doing these wireless systems and a lot of them are doing their own proprietary stuff like Heos and MusicCast and all that kind of thing that that is out there from Denim Morant and from Yamaha and there's, there's loads more that we could go into you know you lose count very very quickly Ed's more could probably give us even more even some niche names that, that we wouldn't think about but uh, it's new for Bowers and Wilkins and the reason that they've taken the time the reason they've, they're telling us that they've taken the time is they wanted a high end solution and they had looked at a lot of the off the shelf options that other manufacturers have used and so on and felt that none of these mesh systems did what they wanted to do which was synchronization for left and right channel and being quick enough to do that you were talking like milliseconds and they wanted to be in microseconds so they decided three years ago after looking at the market and, and looking at everything to develop their own system and the five products that they've launched uh, last week and which are available now as you listen to the podcast they're launched on monday uh, the 29th of april uh, are just the first wave of products um, they have lots more products coming in the next 6 to 12 months but basically they've tried to have a wide sweep of different use cases for the for the main launch so for AV wise there is the formation bar which is a sound bar, it's a 3 channel sound bar, um, it can do 5.1, it just doesn't do it at the moment um, so the next product cycle will probably see rear speakers for the formation bar as well as the formation bar you have the formation base which is what it sounds like it's a subwoofer dual driver uh, opposing drivers 
a design that you'll be, if you're familiar with BMW stuff, you'll be familiar with that design from previous models. Again, this is uh, based on the wireless system. So that's the AV side. Moving over to the audio side, you then have the wedge. So I, I'm not too sure about these names, but anyway, the, the wedge is, it's a bit like the Zeppelin, if you remember the Zeppelin. I'm, I'm, and I'm sure you reviewed the Zeppelin for us, Ed. Um, I did review a number Zeppelin, of years ago. yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so um, it's similar to that. It's, it's not as wide. Um, it's a really nicely designed product. It has a subwoofer in the middle. It has the mid-range drivers slightly further apart and then the tweeters further apart again. Um, the nice thing with this is that it, they don't, the drivers don't point outwards towards you. Thinking behind that is that normally they'll be on a kitchen surface or on a table or a sideboard or whatever. And what they want to do is project the sound as wide as possible and as high as possible and give you a nice spread of sound. We had a demo in, it, it, basically the, the event happened in Mayfair. It was a house in Mayfair, so you can imagine the standard a house that it was. You know, high ceilings, beautiful plaster work, all that kind of thing. Beautiful furnishings. It was like a townhouse, so down the stairs was like a bedroom, so that's where they did the wedge demonstration you then had the two living rooms one was for the uh, stereo speakers and then another one for the AV products and then there was a kitchen and, and so on so they actually used the house to, to demonstrate the system. Yeah, I saw a photograph on, on Twitter from that event and I thought for a second it was, it was taken an old people's home judging but it was shot from, <laughs> from the back of the room and a lot of ageing men looking at um, <laughs> a presentation and I thought yeah. what's that? <laughs> yeah. um, anyway the, 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 I've got to say the wedge it sounded amazing it really did sound really, really nice, as you would expect from a Bowers & Wilkins product. I've never heard a bad sound in Bowers & Wilkins product. As you can imagine, but the thing is, they're, they're trying to get stereo separation, but if you're using a, a one-point source, you're never going to have a wide stereo sound stage. And I found that it wasn't wide, um, even though they're using fancy DSP and, and, and the rest of it. But what it, what it was, was it was clear, there was no distortion, uh, voices sounded amazing, the bass was uh, really, really nice. It, it wasn't flabby and, and and over the top and boomy. It was it was really tight and and it was really fast and 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 everything you would expect from a high end audio product. Um, and you got that from the wedge. And then moving to the duos, which are I think that's three thousand four hundred ninety nine pounds a pair. So these are um, active speakers. The stands are seven hundred quid extra, which is normally the case with high end audio. You know the stands are. are usually quite expensive but it's all beautifully built it's really nicely designed if you're if you've ever seen the the bmw 800 series you'll recognize the design straight away because it's the tweeter on top design uh, with a driver below that obviously uh, there's amplification built in there there is uh, dsp and eq on board and i have to say that the demonstration and it's again it's it's high quality recordings and all the rest of it um to you know if you're manufacturer that's what you're going to do you're going to make the, the product sound as best as it can but i was flabbergasted with the performance of the duos i've never heard a bass extension dynamic extension like that from a couple of uh, basically bookshelf stand mount speakers um and and i've always been a fan of active speakers for oh, a long long time because you can you can basically adapt the amplification to the driver you know um and and get it working correctly and your crossovers and so on don't exist because you're using separate you know amplification and all the rest of it and you're doing things digitally um and that, that's i've always been a fan of that approach because you're getting high quality this system the 125 watts per channel 250 watts in total doesn't sound like that it sounds far more advanced far more powerful and the bottom end is serious uh, but not at the expense of everything else um so sometimes with digital products or uh, digital amplification and so on you can hear the limit limiters coming in ed and you can he hear things start to tighten up uh, as you start to drive it towards the limitations of what it can do didn't hear any of that either so really quite impressive now there's a few issues here there's no hdmi on the soundbar asked why they were guided by the u.s market which was optical and basically what they're saying is that anything you can do with hdmi at the moment so we're not talking about 2.1 and EARC and so on. We're talking about normal ARC and what you can do. There's, there's, they didn't see any advantage of using an HDMI over optical for that. So that, that's what they said. They are looking at EARC because obviously that is a higher level um, of 5.1 sound. And there will be benefits to introducing that. But that won't be on uh, the sound bar as it is at the moment. And that will probably come in the next phase of products or the next generation of product. But it's a nice suite of products. The only thing is, 
I just, I just suppose it milkings and it costs a fair penny. But then again, they haven't skimped on the components being used or the build quality or, or, or the standard of uh, software that's on there. You know, they've they've thought about the problem and they've come to it in their own way. Do I agree with their approach? I think some of it is flawed, but then I'm looking at it from an AV perspective and maybe that's the wrong way to look at it. But, but overall, and certainly for the duo, uh, the duo is absolutely brilliant. The only other thing I haven't mentioned is the Formation Audio. And basically what that is, is a device that you plug all your analog sources into and then it, it puts it onto the wireless mesh network. So you can attach a turntable through a phono stage into the audio and it adds it into the system. But you could go out and just buy a pair of duos and use your mobile phone and whatever streaming services you've got in there once you're on the mesh. Um, so you could start with just one item and build it from there. A bit like everybody else's systems. And I guess the only other thing is it's proprietary to Bowers and Wilkins and there's lots of these systems that they're manufacturer only based and that could be a problem going forward. It's not open to anything else and it hasn't got any inputs whatsoever other than the soundbar for you to go and plug stuff into either. So, um, so it is quite a locked out system. But yeah, really impressed to be honest. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's all logical stuff. I looked through the spec. I was supposed to go to the launch, but there were a couple of reasons why I, I failed to make it. Um, it you know, it, it looks well implemented. It, it it does seem to have the advantage that it, the items do seem to have merit in in their own sort of individual qualities. They don't necessarily you don't you don't automatically have to think about going all in straight away with with some of with it which is yeah. a, 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 an issue that befills some of the competition there's no shortage of competition though and there's still an element of traditionalism and not so much amongst dealers it is i i have seen on my travels dealers going all in for these sort of things and then struggling to actually convince customers to go that mm. that's what they actually want so i always think that um the people who balance it best are Yamaha with Music Cast because you can buy a piece of Yamaha equipment and then you think, oh, actually, it will start sending stuff to other people, other areas if I want it to, but it's just there in the background. And Blue Sound slash NAD because they've essentially just built an ecosystem which plays nice with each other. And again, every component on its own is worth it stands comparison on its own to, to perform a single function. It's only then when, if you want it to, it start you can start to push ex- extra functionality to it yeah, if you wish. Yeah. And I mean, it, you know, Bowser and Wilkins have obviously gone for the high end with this stuff. So, mm. you know, they're they're not messing about here. Each each item has three antennas in it, and each of the antennas does its own thing. So you're not relying on on just one bit of electronics to do all the jobs it has to do. They've actually thought about it and thought about how they split the workload, and and how that works. So you know they're they're, they're getting the best out of the system all the time. Um, you know it's twenty four ninety six um, on the wireless system, but it will do one nine two in 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 one room. So yeah, they they are definitely going for the higher end audiophile market here. Um, this is not for you know somebody that just fancies having a, a bit of a wireless system. This is for your Bowers and Wilkins um, customer base, and you know who those people are. Um, the people who want quality, who uh, will will pay for the quality, and and obviously the components and stuff that they're using is is expensive to start with anyway. So so there is a cost to it. So it's not like they've suddenly gone, oh let's jump on this bandwagon and and uh, you know make make money out of it they've actually thought about it which impressed me I, i'm just not sure there's a wider use case other than you know the audio file, audio file market to be honest um i think it's a harder sell to your, your normal um maybe not even just your normal uh punter but even a, even a punter that's interested in the music and the hi-fi m- maybe it's a hard sell for them as well i don't know it'd be interesting to see how these products um integrate in the market um now, steve you've listened to B and w stuff recently any interest in this? Uh, it is. It's interesting. Um, uh, personally, no, but that's just more because I'm not necessarily interested in in this kind of um, all-in-one multi-room solution that they're going for. Um, it's it's not for me personally, mostly because I can just turn up the sound in one room here and all the other yeah, rooms exactly the, the same. <laughs> exactly the same. Uh, that's if I lived in a bigger place, that might be more <laughs> of an option. Um, I, I do. Uh, 
yeah, it's, it, I mean, it looks interesting. Technology-wise, it looks very interesting. And certainly performance-wise, I have no doubt that your comments are true because I, from what I've heard of what BMW have been doing in the last year or so, it's been absolutely amazing in terms of sound quality. So I have no doubt about that. It's just a question of whether, as Ed puts it, there's enough demand amongst um, consumers and whether um, there's, you know, whether there's enough interest in building a bespoke BMW system around your house. I mean, mm. as Ed said, one of the beauties of something like music cars is it's just there and you could be buying an AVR. Now, if you buy a, a Yamaha AVR just because you want an AVR and they're good AVRs, you buy it. But it happens to have music cast in it as well. So if you have a you know a speaker later on, you buy a, music, a Yamaha speaker. Suddenly you've got a music cast system without even realising it. That's that is really quite clever. Plus it's bulletproof. It seems to work without you know flawlessly. So I guess it'll come down to how good it sounds, how it's priced, um, whether there's enough interest in, amongst consumers, and of course how actually how good it is in practice, how it works. Yeah, one of the the things that they're obviously going for here is, like I say, the higher quality of audio uh, and and digital files and all the rest of it. And leading nicely onto what we're going to talk about next, it's Rune enabled, Ed, mm -hmm. out, of the, out of the box. So, what's Rune, and should <laughs> should we be interested in it? Uh, right, you should be, and. It's also, it, it, in terms of selling a product at that price point, it's no long, this is the uh, HDR support. This is the, 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 essentially, after a long period of time where there was no, not necessarily any significant cross-party object that wasn't just a standard license, I would argue that there now is. Rune is music playback software, but that's a bit like saying that, um, you know, the LaFerrari is a means of going to the shops. That's not... It, it, you can use it for that, but it does a bit more than that. Effectively, the review is up, so I'm going to... Uh, and also, I noticed that time is, is creeping onward, so I shall be trying to keep this as brief as I can. Effectively, Rune will collate your stored music. It doesn't really matter how many different libraries you've got it, wherever you've scrolled it away. It can be on one library. It can be on multiple libraries. It will take any uh, library that you pointed at, collate that alphabetically or by artist or by genre or by pretty much any, anything you like. And furthermore, it will update the metadata on the album as well to ensure that those genre searches and album searches and artist searches are up to snuff then if you are a tidal or cobuzz subscriber or both i've got them both attached to it at the moment if you favor an album in those streaming services they appear alphabetically as part of one single cohesive library it doesn't care where the music comes from it just builds a single browsable library that works also like a streaming service in so much as it will do recommended for you if you've been listening to this and it takes a lot of data on what you've been doing it goes well you might also want to try this and so on and so forth so as a so piece of does, does it only work with tidal and cobus so it won't work with moment, spotify or anything no like at the moment it's tidal and cobus okay but the other thing is if it was just playback that would be you know that's pretty smart but what it will also then do is you can tell it if you like so for example there's a chord hugo 2 here at the moment so if i have a, a cd sized file 40 20, 16 bits at 44.1 kilohertz i can then use rune to upsample that file to uh 2488.2 kilohertz uh 24176.4 kilohertz uh, or i can go balls out uh, and go anything all the way up to 24705.6 which is a very big file um now as i say in the review if you're going to start doing stuff like that you need to be running it on some fairly significant hardware this laptop has i'm i'm doing this call on it's not underpowered i mean it's an i5 intel i5 it's got 12 gigs of ram it's on a solid state hard drive I found that simply ticking the up sample to all the way settings didn't sound that great, but I'm inclined to believe that it could just be this laptop not physically not having the, the, the grunt to do that sort of work. Um, however, less significant up sampling settings actually have, have been quite impressive. Also, if that wasn't enough, you can then use it to um, 
do some fairly effective, if not desperately complicated room eq functions as well as well as crossfade and other other um, features for, for headphone listening essentially as well as providing you with the best music library going it then a- attaches facilities which make it much much more than simple playback software um, and it's it's you know genuinely impressive as a result of that and then finally it doesn't just do that for one room if you set up your room core you are uh, you're going to be limited ultimately by your wireless network and the processing power of your core but if you really wanted to send 24705.6 to any any device that's capable of handling it it's not going to stop you it really changes I, i'll be honest i've you know i've been playing about with streaming audio software and, and, and hardware for the best part of a decade it is it is game changing. I mean, it's been around for a year, uh, uh, two or three years now. Um, it's been improving all the time. And as I say in the conclusion of the piece, I can't ignore the fact that it now exists. It's going to be unfortunate for streaming software that's now starting to make its way in and, and other pieces of equipment. If you're going to send me a, an expensive piece of equipment, I will argue. I will have to find myself asking, is it Rune compatible and Rune ready? Because that's the the natural playmate for for equipment at this sort of price point you can't bury your head in the sand and hope that it goes away there are perhaps single figures of company companies out there whose streaming software is good enough to to be in any way in keeping with rune and what i find interesting is that most of those are also rune compatible they know what they're up against if you aren't if you're building a product of over a thousand pounds and you aren't looking at room compatibility, you are going to probably be in a spot of bother quite quickly. Okay, good stuff. Um, I've yet to download the uh, the free version of it to try it out, but I will be doing that. Um, it's just my Tidal subscriptions run out. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. All I would say is um, there is no getting away from the fact that the two week free part free trial is all well and good once you run out of that there's no getting around the fact this is not cheap 120 dollars a year or you can give them 500 dollars for a lifetime license now this has already been brought up in the thread i take lifetime to mean lifetime of the platform i don't suggest that in 40 years time you're still going to be able to use room <laughs> need to be very clear about this it, it, it is it is ex, it is expensive there's no it, it, you know it does it doesn't make for a comparison point against affordable streaming equipment yeah. you have to be looking at the big boy stuff anyway but it's just outstandingly good yeah of course if they go bankrupt um you know you've got to be confident that you can spend that type of money and it's not going to you be a do, screen for you um, but because nonetheless, it could you, nonetheless, I mean, the company, uh, you, you, if you now start looking through the list, when you, if you look at the press releases that we all get sent, the number of products out there, which, you know, you'll just notice it lurking in the bottom, Rune Ready, Rune Compatible. Essentially, we all know that software makes or breaks products, both in, the, in, in multi-channel and two-channel. This has arrived like a gift from the gods, because if you're a smaller manufacturer, you shouldn't be hiring some, you know, long-suffering fresh out of university person to suddenly develop you a killer app you should acknowledge you should acknowledge the fact that this exists you pay your dues and you go with that because it will make your product peerless and the more companies that do that hopefully the less the end consumer needs to pay out for it as well this is true um uh we'll we'll see how that goes um but it I, it, this is a, a bold thing to say, but if you are looking to build a serious digital streaming system, it's worth it. Okay. And I do mean, I do mean, you know, you're looking to spend uh, a, a significant way into four figures, but it is worth it. Okay, good stuff. Um, I, I don't think Steve will do that in the near future because Steve's uh, all about the disc, and he's also all about the bass. No trouble with Steve. He's totally addicted to bass. <laughs> he's totally, yeah. His back uh, his his back will never recover because of all the subs he's had in. But he's going to talk about. Well, actually, it's not been too bad because of, of late I've had in some sensibly sized, sort of you know, entry level slash mid range subs rather than something you know, like right. that bloody uh, PB four thousand <laughs> the size of a fridge freezer. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you've, you've looked at a few of them. We're going to go over them in the next few weeks uh, and discuss them on the podcast. So let's start with Fine Audio because Fine Audio are not really a brand that I've had any interaction with recently, Steve. Um, no, so have really because they're still relatively new. Exactly. Um, it's a British startup founded by a bunch of ex-Tanoi uh, engineers and one uh, or two others as well, which I think has a others, very yes. important. D- it, it, there's undoubted tannoy influences to what they've done and some of the products that i've seen but it's tempered with the experiences of some of the other people in the team and, I, and i'm hoping that i think it makes a difference with the stuff i've tested and i think it will with this as well if i mean i've so far seen a 5.1 uh, speaker package with floor standards um in the f the f range their f300 range which is basically their entry level range they yeah. do other levels too and i heard the f700 i think it was at uh, bristol which sounded absolutely stupendous um and the f300 was fantastic for the money um really really good performing 5.1 system um with floor standards um for, and for the money was absolutely stellar the well the sub i had in was the f312 so they've got the f300 um speaker range and there's also the f3 sub range and that goes from f38 f310 and f312 so if you're clever you realize it's 8 inch 10 inch and 12 inch drivers the f312 uh, 12, 12 inch driver uh, 520 watts of built-in amplification downward firing um base port and uh, you know it's it looks like a sub i mean no one's trying to redesign the wheel here it's a it's a black um cube on big rubber feet with a removable cloth grill and uh, a big 12 inch driver but but I think by keeping it simple, by not trying to reinvent the wheel, by just trying to do what they know and doing it well, um, I think they delivered an absolutely fantastic sub. I actually reviewed it um, along with a bunch of other subs in a similar price bracket. So things like the REL HT1205, which actually is 100 quid more, although they, I think Rell are currently chucking in um, the wireless adapter um, as part of that deal. So it kind of makes it similar in terms of price point. But um, that's £100 more. And I thought that the uh, the F312 actually had the edge on the rail. Uh, I think it's a, a fantastic sub. It, it's, it goes deep. It's powerful. It, it's ported, but I, it's still really responsive. It's, it, you know, it's got a, a, a really responsive performance to it. It delivers um, bass fast and accurate. And I thought for 599 quid, it was an absolute bargain of, of a subwoofer. And if you're in the market for something, you know, um, you know, when you're, if you're in the market for a sub and you, your price range is around about the £500 mark, this is definitely worth considering and, if possible, um, um, demoing because I, I think fine are relatively new on the marketplace, but I think they're doing some really good stuff by basically doing what they know and not trying to uh, to reinvent the wheel. And, um, and my, my experiences with this sub were superb. I have to be honest. I mean, I've only tested the 301 stand mount as a stereo review for AV forums. Uh, again, there's nothing... I think it's telling there's no piece of technology at any point of it which is like you know there's an AES white paper or or anything like that it's it's meat and two veg engineering but it's done by people that very clearly know every last facet of what that meat and two veg engineering is going to do yeah exactly. and it just it you know it there's a time and a place for 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 for, um engineering wizardry and there's a time and a place for just getting it right and thus far i'm pretty much with you on this my experiences are they get it right more times than they get it wrong so uh yeah it's a it's a brand to watch and um yeah i I, i'm looking forward to reading your sub review shameless (laughs) enthusiasm for that yeah i'll sub your review Yeah, no, I mean, you're, right, you're absolutely right, Ed. And, you know, if you look at the specs for the, the F312, you know, there's nothing on it. That's, it's, you know, it's, it's got a simple set of connections at the rear, a very simple set of um, controls, um, no remote control, nothing like that. But it just, you know, it's easy to set up. It's, uh, it does exactly what it's meant to do, and it does it really well. And it does it for a competitive price. And I think ultimately, what more could you want out of a, out of a sort of an entry-level mid-range sub and that £500 price back it? Okay, so these uh, reviews will be up. Actually, Rune went up today, so when you listen to the podcast, it is there. The thread is really quite active at the minute. So um, yeah, so, yeah, and can I just you know, um, thank you very much for reading it. A, 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 a thousand hits in less than twelve hours on a Sunday is is always is yeah, always no, reason, that's, that's really good going. And Steve's fine audio uh, subwoofer review will be out later this week, so I'll see you can read them later the week. Uh, we're going to have a quick break, and we'll be back with Ed's best of the month.
Right, so before we move on to movies, uh, we're going to do the traditional end of month roundups, uh, the best of. So Ed's going to do his playlist, his uh, album and vinyl release. Yeah. Now, uh, last minute change of plan here because uh, album and vinyl release was going to be the same for brevity, but it's not because I listened to something on Friday which completely and utterly changed that. Vinyl release of the month is the latest album from Uncle. Now, anyone that reads my reviews uh, will know that I am an enormous fan of Uncle. I have been since they released their first album a very long time ago. I'm not going to say how long ago because it just makes me feel old and sad. Um this is The Road Part 2. Uh, it's my vinyl release for one very, very simple reason. I don't believe it's going to sound significantly different to the digital, but as a piece of packaging, both The Road Part 1 and Part 2 are some of the most beautifully constructed um, records I've bought in years. They're just beautiful. The artwork on The Road Part 2 is you don't have to have any interest in them. You can just pick it up and hold it and it looks and feels spectacular. It's a great album. Don't worry about things like that, but it's on all the streaming services. You can listen to it on in any medium that you see fit. But as a vinyl release, it just, it makes you feel momentarily better about your place in the world. And you can't say fairer than that, really. Um, it's got some good tracks on it. There's one particular track quite early on, um, which I believe has one of the former Massive Attack contributors in it. It's called Armour, but it's A-R full stop M-O-U-R. It's just that, that literally it is music to fight wars to. It's an incredible piece of music. Really, really, really good. So very entertaining. Um, but my album of the month arrived on Friday and I had no expect. Well, I had limited expectations for it, but I just haven't stopped listening to it since it came out. Um, it's by a lady called Marina Diamandis who used to perform as Marina and the Diamonds. And I've, you know, I was quite a fan of that. But it was sort of light. It was it was poppy, but with an edge. She's a cracking songwriter. And there's a degree of just, you know, Ed, you know, sark and cynicism and world weariness to her lyrics that were always quite good. But this latest album, Love and Fear, is just phenomenal. Um, I put it on on Friday. I listened to it from start to finish. And then, even though I'm on finite bandwidth, all the rest of it, yada, 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 I just started listening to it again. It's absolutely fabulous. Um, she's got an incredible voice. Uh, again, there's just uh, a more... It's It could technically be classed as pop music, but there's so much more to it than that. Uh, and I, I will be assembling a playlist of things that I've been enjoying over the month it'll pop into the podcast thread um as soon as i can put it in tomorrow um and it will feature a track or two from this and a track or two from some of the other bits and bobs i just adored it and if you say oh i don't buy pop music well that's just stupid um some of the most profound and clever stuff <laughs> happens in the mainstream so just I I enjoy it for what it is i absolutely love it and i'll probably end up buying it on vinyl as well because I've, I've it would appear that that's got quite a smart vinyl release too but i i just adored it really 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 good and then playlists it's been a crap month for playlists but cobas rose into the ranks of almost not mediocre with their new electro releases so that was about as good as it gets for whatever reason all of the streaming services have gone off the boil on playlists it's almost like they're running out of money and they're concentrating on keeping the lights on just cynically suggesting that that might be a problem for them at the moment <laughs> <laughs> But yes, those are the things. I will put a playlist up. It will be in Spotify. Same caveat, you can convert it over to any other format that you like. Um, I'll, I'll try and get 10 tracks that won't make you cry. Um, and uh, you, can, you can take it from there. But just whatever you do, listen to that Marina album. It's f***ing fabulous. I uh, actually found it without your help, Ed. It was mm. just one of these things that just popped up. I thought, I'll have a listen to this. I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's an absolutely brilliant album. It's been on um, repeat quite a bit over mm. the weekend. So, um, so yeah, uh, sounds amazing. Yeah. Really, really, really good sounding album. Right. 
Again, thanks for the playlist. Uh, I have been using it through the month as a dropping off, jumping off point. If this month is as good as last month, I'm looking forward to it. Oh dear, no pressure. Right, okay, fine, <laughs> good. Right, uh, Steve's going to disappear for roughly two minutes because that's how long mm. we're going to take on this because uh, myself and Kaz are quickly going to talk about it. Shall Endgame. I do it as well because I'm actually going to the cinema tomorrow. Is it worth Well, well we're not we're not going to talk about spoilers, but um, if anybody doesn't want to know what m- myself and Kaz think, um, then jump forward two minutes. and I'll, and ta- I'll, gonna... I'll take my chances. I'll, I'll, I'll sit in. All right, off you go, Stephen. Just uh, type in the message thing when you're done. And oh, we'll do. Yeah, right. okay, we'll do. And then we'd give a massive spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay, so uh, Avengers Endgame. What we're going to do is we will review the film when we come back on the 13th um, of May uh, because by then... I, I'm expecting it. most people will have seen it, and we'll do it at the end of the oh, podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, looking at the numbers, it looks like yeah, it has. Yeah. Um, but we'll do it. We'll, what we'll do is we'll do it at the end of the podcast, so you can switch off and go away if you don't want to hear our, our thoughts. But just generally, um, what we thought coming out of the theatre. Uh, obviously, I saw it on a Friday. Cause you saw it on Wednesday midnight. Is that correct? I did the midnight showing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, very briefly, uh, technically. It is a tour de force. It is superb. Uh, technically, I saw it in 3D IMAX. It is the best 3D I have ever seen. And and the same was true of Infinity War. It was really well done. Um, but obviously, technology has moved on even a, a little bit more now. And I have to say, um, I genuinely thought I was sitting looking through a window into... Because obviously IMAX as well, it takes up your per- visual periphery as well. It it was stunning. It was absolutely stunning, and um, it looked fabulous. The effects were amazing. Um, the money is up there on the screen. In terms of plot and all the rest of it, we're not going to discuss that in a minute. Um, other than, I am not emotionally invested in the Marvel universe. I have not seen all twenty one movies leading up to this one. There are some areas of the Marvel universe I haven't seen nothing of Captain America. I haven't seen any of those films. I've only seen one Iron Man film. I didn't watch the sequels. So for me, I I am not as as invested as Cars obviously is. But I came out of the cinema just saying wow, and I'll and 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 accepting that I will never see anything like that probably in my lifetime um, going forward because the amount of time they have taken to get to this point. And then to actually nail it when they get there, round of applause for me. Absolutely brilliant. Kaz, very briefly. Yes, uh, I would agree on all of those points. There's 22 films that are, a, as a whole, a landmark event in our lifetimes, a landmark film event. Uh, and it's you built... to find that. <laughs> well, it, it, I mean, it, it is, though. Like, like, you won't get anything like this. People will look back on these, this 22 film spread that ended in Endgame, not to say there won't be more movies, but they will look back on it as being something phenomenal that's been achieved. The consistency, the level of quality that they've maintained, and the standouts, particularly that the Russo brothers have brought to the game. They, they've done pretty much every single standout film in the series. They did Winter Soldier, which I'm not going to forgive you not for not having seen Phil, because you have to get on that. Um, it's on Netflix, by the way. Winter Soldier, Civil War, uh, they did um, Infinity War, and now they've done Endgame. And y- I don't think fans could expect better than this. Uh, I appreciate that I gave it an 8 in the review. I appreciate that uh, there was a lot hanging on it after what happened in Infinity War. And uh, it's not without flaws but as a taking it as a whole taking the marvel universe as a whole there's nothing that compares to what they've done and it it is for someone who's watched all the films reviewed pretty much all of them for the site um it was it was it was very moving yeah get through that period it was it was three hours where I, i sat in the midnight showing no one moved yeah, uh, no one shuffled with popcorn. No one uh, was distracting or annoying. What is that it, it, noise? It just... it sounds like yeah, someone's describing in the background. It, it, you, have you got a beard, cars or something like that? We always talk about my beard, don't we? We always get on the beard. Yeah, well, okay. it's, it's interfering with the microphone. Okay, I'll hold the microphone away from my beard. Is that better? Good. Yeah, yes. okay. Tremendously. Uh, 
I'd, I've got to agree with you, Kaz. Um, I've I haven't had an experience like that in a cinema for a very, very, very long time. In fact, the last film I can remember where it was absolutely packed, and everybody, and I mean absolutely everybody, was was in silence. Uh, and taking everything in was Jurassic Park. That's the last time I can remember anything like that. Um, you know, laughing at the right moments, just and for three hours as well. It flew by. So yeah, um, I think that's about enough for us at the minute. Like I say, we'll come back to this. Uh, we're going to talk the numbers in a minute. Uh, um, but yeah, <laughs> what perfect timing there. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> we've just gone right. There's time to get Steve back. We just had a message flashed into our screens. Steve with us, going for a piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get Steve just back in. Just in case inside. you were assuming that we were a, a, a slick, well, you know we're not a slick and old yeah. machine, but even even by our own low standards, there. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 another thing that amazed me, Kaz, uh, while Steve is, is is away for a second, um, the the other thing that really amazed me is that I. I I have never seen that Odeon, and it's an Odeon with 12, 11, 12 screens, uh, one IMAX screen and the rest are they're, they're fairly large screens. Um, there wasn't any other showings on, on Thursday. There was no other films being shown. It was the same, same on the Wednesday. Yeah, and they ev- had the, every they single had every- one was sold out. Yep. Every yep. screen. I have never seen that, ever. Yeah. It's, it, they had every single screen showing it. At, this is the showcase... Uh, V- uh, deluxe what, whatever they call it yeah. the showcase Lux and um, every screen I can't remember how many screens they've got they must have like 15 screens and the car park was full couldn't get in the car park yeah it was it was insane it was midnight and you couldn't get in the park car yeah. park I, I and you know going back to when Star Wars came back with uh, you know The Force Awakens I was expecting to see that and that never happened. I got my tickets really easy and I could go to several showings over that weekend without any hassle, without the screens being completely full. I've never seen that Odeon. And this is the Odeon in the Metro Centre, so you know it's a big footfall. I've never seen it as busy. And, and they were queuing for, for the next screens going in. There was physical queues across the foyer. Never this seen that. This is our Star Wars moment. I think, I think yeah. it, but it's, it's a build-up, isn't it? It's 11 years and 22 films. I mean, it's it, it's a it's a build up. I know there's going to be people who haven't got into it, but there are going to be a lot of people who have come the journey, and you know they're they're going to want to see it one, two, yeah. three times. Yeah. But but like I say, you know, I had no investment in it. Uh, uh, certainly not as big an investment in it, and I was still there on opening day. Well, not opening day because I was in London, but I was there the day after. And it looks like that's happened with everybody else because I've never seen the queues like that in that that cinema and every screen was showing it. There was no other film being shown over the weekend because I tried to go and see it again over the weekend and I could not get in. Everything was sold out, which leads us on to the fact that it's made how much, Steve? 1.2 billion in its opening five days, which is nearly twice as much as the previous record holder, which was Infinity War with 670 million. Yeah, yeah. I, I really hope it staggering. tops Titanic. Yeah. And Avatar. It, will, it will definitely top Titanic. What about Avatar? But it's got enough repeat business to make 2.7 billion is another question entirely. Because this is how, it's so front-loaded. Everyone's going to see it in the first week. And obviously no, I, haven't, I, I haven't gone yet. No, but it hasn't been out for a week yet. <laughs> People will see it several times, though. I'm yeah. well, going to go and see be, it. There will be repeat viewing. Um, but uh, three hours, it's you know, it's probably not going to get as much. It, it, whether it will get enough repeat viewing to keep going to two point seven billion and beyond is another issue. Well, what, what we're uh, saying, Steve, is, and again, this is not talking about the film in, in any way, but I have never seen the Odeon in the Metro Centre as busy as it was. Everything was sold out. I've tried to see it again yeah, over the weekend. But that's I what I mean. I, mean, I cannot get in. You know, the first week because no one wants to. Everyone wants a surprise. No one yeah. wants it ruined. Whether that 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 those kind of numbers, whether there'll be a massive drop off next weekend because everyone's already seen it is the, is the question but even so it's going to make you know it's going to easily it'll definitely split the camerons and make, the, the uh, thing that might work happen. the thing that might work for it is that we're coming into another bank holiday weekend um so that you might get a second a second win there for it um, i don't you might, think there's anything major coming out well we're, 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 we're just about to go into that and aren't we so, <laughs> so anyway um we need to do a movie of the month um now i saw shazam i really enjoyed shazam have you seen it yet steve I haven't been to the cinema this month. Right. Okay. So I, I, don't, I can't answer you. I can't do it this month. I, I, I really like that. I, um, Hellboy, uh, I've forgotten about already. 
I'm yeah, trying to are try you not to counting Infinity War as a, uh, sorry um, uh, Endgame. As I'm just movie. coming on Endgame. Endgame is is the Endgame, and um, uh, just co- because I'm never going to see anything like that again. So that it, in in that aspect, it absolutely storms this month. It's the best film. So it's probably going to be the best film for the year. So that's that's my choice. I anyway. don't know. In a in a in it we, we, we're far, free well, Hobson Shaw. Free Hobson Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I'd forgotten about that. But then I, I have, sure. I have absolutely no investment in Fast and Furious as well. So no, it yeah, does help if you have. Sure, you you should love and it's John just... Wick three. Oh yeah, John Wick. Ooh. Ooh. But yeah. yeah, that's next month, right? Um, Kaz, what's your movie of the month? The month it's being gotta April. Be, it's got to got to be. Sorry, drop the mic. Literally, there. <laughs> it's got it's got to be uh, Endgame. Okay. In, in fact, I, I would say for all this. For, for all how I rated it, I reckon after I've seen it again, I'd probably pip it a bit higher. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm stop, really stop, looking... stop, stop. We're not discussing anything. End game. Good. No, right. No. I, so... I think that's got to be the film. It's it it would be it would defeat anything else for a long time. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we have kind of got that message now. <laughs> uh, and Steve hasn't been to the cinema, so he hasn't got a vote this week. So um, this month, so. There you go. Oh, that, that, that's eighteen quid I've just wasted. Isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you'll make up up for it in the next month, uh, or maybe not. Uh, although May's looking like a good month, this week's not looking that great, though. Well, uh, would you open oh, a film up we... this week? <laughs> no, no. But it's it's interesting that the uh, what is being released. Uh, maybe you can take us through it, cause. Yeah. So we got the. I, I ha- you're going to pronounce this for me. We got the curse of La La I've seen I've seen a couple of trailers for this and and it it looks really quite good actually. From it it looks really creepy. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to get a preview to that because it 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 got some uh, interesting preview reviews, and um, it does look interesting. But I I don't think we're going to get to cover it. Unfortunately, it does it does look quite good. That's coming out this week. A bit of horror isn't a bad way to go to provide an alternative to Endgame. We've also got Long Shot. So we're going for comedy here. Charlize Theron and Seth Rogen. Uh, we're going to see whether those two uh, make for, a, for an interesting pair. That that looks fun. And again, comedy is a good alternative. Tolkien, I, I'm not sold on this. I mean, I think, Steve, you expressed interest last time, but Tolkien's Did coming I? out as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not interested. I, it's, uh, <laughs> I, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's yeah. I, I, I yeah. It just okay, sounds so like trying to that. make Lord of the Rings without trying to make with that actually. Make and, Lord of the Rings. It's it's trying to cash in on that whole yeah, genre, yeah. isn't it? And Vox Lux, which could have... I mean, I think it's trying to cash in a bit on a cross between Black Swan and... Um, a Star, Star is Born. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's, well, it's definitely gold, got down that route. Gold, 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 gold. I'm <laughs> supposed to be covering that, and I've heard really bad things, so I'm dreading that, but... Um, <laughs> But that that's that's our lineup for third of May. Actually, long shots out a couple of days early. It's out on Wednesday. Okay, so that's uh, that's what's coming up the cinema. If you don't want to go and see Endgame for the third time, disc releases this week. Uh, should we worry that there's no 4K release? I don't think. Well, so. there's been a few. There's just nothing this particular week, is there? Yeah. Because I mean, last I mean, week we had Alien and Bumblebee, both and, of which are excellent. And the Captain America series, wasn't it last uh, week? Yeah, and the Captain. Yeah, America yeah the whole films. Captain America series, Alien, Bumblebee, and not uh, not Bumblebee was US. Bumblebee. Was it, Alien, oh, well, a, I, 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 I would. I have to say, I would watch Alien, Bumblebee. That sounds like a great. <laughs> <movie. laughs> so we had Sorry. we had Alien, the Captain America trilogy. We had Mortal Engines, and we had Into the Spider Verse. Okay, I'll so, shut up then. <laughs> Pretty so tall, really one. good stuff. And, and I think I, I don't know why the timing is this week. Uh, I don't know why they've released nothing, um, but there there is nothing. On the plus side, we are getting Bumblebee early, so the review for that will be up. And Bumblebee is really good. That's one of the films I watched on my um, over Easter, and um, it's it's that rarity of things a good Transformers film. Um, I guess yes. if you make enough of them, you make a good one by accident. And sort of and basically, it has to happen. <laughs> the first PG film I've seen in the cinema for for like a decade and another that's another one like that was the other one i was mentioning when i said spider verse was great for the kids it's nice to be able to show them Bumblebee. It, it was actually i mean it was set in 87 but it's made like an 80s kids film yeah um, and and it really works and the effects are top draw it looks fantastic on disc it sounds fantastic on disc i think um hayley steinfeld's really good in the lead role the animate Bumblebee really well. I think John Sonner's really funny as the kind of the lead, um, not villain exactly, but the protagonist. Uh, and uh, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. And Generation One Cybertron. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives us hope, hope, doesn't it? 
They um, yeah, I thought they play any Stan Bush in it. You know, you got the touch from music yes, from the yes, oh, yes. They, they do play. You've got the touch. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, honestly, honestly, Ed, it, it's really, it's really good. <laughs> Can I just say I played the original Transformers soundtrack to my son, who is now convinced that it's a work of you know immeasurable greatness and then you actually you pick him up from school and you've got half the class you know just randomly yelling you got that touch and so on and so forth so <laughs> i have you know destroyed yet another generation of people so yeah it's, it's quite satisfying but uh right, i mean okay. the, the thing is though that let's face it it's never going to have the emotional content of the original transformers movie where let's face it it made game of thrones look a bit polite for 20 minutes <laughs> so <laughs> it's like time to get rid of time to get rid of the 85 toy line and bring on the 86 so um <laughs> spoilers by the way if you haven't seen a 30 something year old children's cartoon right uh should we move on to blu-rays coming out this week then <laughs> sure there's a whole slew uh, I think we mentioned a lot of them in the competitions as well. Master of None <laughs> Season 1, Replicas, 303 Squadron, Cujo, uh, Ohazard Balthazar. Those are all up on the competitions. And also Justice League Fatal 5, uh, the animation. It, that's the latest in the DC animated universe. Uh, Being Frank, uh, battery batteries not included. That's missing the asterisk. Way, I apologise for that. Oh, should be asterisks. Batteries not included. Okay. So is that is that speaking the actual, of eighties action? Is that the eight, the eighties one? I, I assume so. I, I loved that film as a kid. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. It would be uh, easy to be forgiven for thinking it could be a remake in this day and age, though. I, don't I, know, think well, it is, right. I think it's the original. No, it's the, it is the original. I just mean it would be easy for Ed yeah. to think it's a remake. Uh, yeah, it is the original. They haven't remade it yet, but it'd be easy. It'd be easy if that was the next on the list. Friday Night Lights, the movie. Which, which is, is which is a great film. Good. Yeah. Billy great Bob film. Yeah, really good. And Cheat, the ITV TV series. Wow. <laughs> I can, I can, I can, I can say, you know, across the internet, I can sense the raw enthusiasm dripping off every vote, is, every uh, vowel. It, just a quick question there, Kaz. This being Frank, is that the one about the guy who used to have that um, massive yes. head? What was he yes. called again? Frank Sidebottom or something? Frank Sidebottom, yeah. Frank, yeah. Yes. What a weird character he was. Um, and he died recently, didn't he? So is this is this why this has been released? I, I have no idea, but it's another one where they've made several movies about him. This yeah. is a documentary, so they did, did isn't it? The, yes, it is a documentary. But there was a movie like, with Fassbender about. It was Fassbender in the mask, yeah. yeah. But, mm. um, but yeah. anyway, let's move on to disc of the month because it was an absolute cracker, uh, and it, it could only be Alien the fortieth anniversary. I watched it. Um, I've watched it three times now on different devices. Uh, it looks stunning. It looks up. It's just dripping with detail, but it's always like that, and it's and it's. I think it's one of the best openings to a movie I, I've seen, I, I've ever seen. Um, that, maybe that's taken a bit too far, but so I you just mean when the as the credits come up, I just love the cinematography, the way they introduce us to everybody, the way they, yeah. they introduce us to the ship, because the camera's slowly moving down the corridors and and. And and basically what it's doing is it's just setting everything up nicely. Whereas the rush that these days and and there's lots well, of exposition and all the rest of it. Cut, when he did the director's cut, he trimmed a lot. He, he speeded it up that, that you know he trimmed out some st- some of those shots yeah. to get to the uh, the crew waking up quicker, which shows you that that that's the mentality he's got now. Is like you know we. Yeah. What I love about it is it takes its time. You spend a long time getting to know the characters, getting everything you need to know about those characters before mm. you know what happens happens. And then and then it's you know then we're off to the races and it's 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 brilliant filmmaking. It's absolutely brilliant filmmaking. But what I love about it is it looks like it was made yesterday. Absolutely, and apart, apart from, from the, the computers the and computer stuff, screens, yeah. yeah, it looks like it was made. Yet there's nothing in the haircuts that says seventies. Nothing about the clothes that says seventies. The production design is fantastic. It could have been made yesterday. It it, it's, it really stands up. It yeah. really stands up, and it looks. Stunning. Yeah, and and another one I've watched recently was two thousand and one. We've discussed it before, but that's see, that, that got the sixties cut fashions. It, it has, <laughs> and 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 it's and you can see where you know they, they were trying to um, you know it's got the Hilton Hotel and you got but you've got video phones and stuff, but, that they, which is like although they have got um, if you look closely when the astronauts are on the on the uh, Discovery, they've got um, um, I, well, uh, IBM pads, yeah. viewing pads, basically yeah. um, tablets. Yeah, uh, but again, that's another that, another film that takes its time. It sets everything up. It takes its time. It moves you through, um, and 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 we've lost that with today's movies. And the, the beginning of Alien, it's just it is just a masterclass of cinematography. 
uh, enlightening and setting the mood and setting the scene. Fantastic. Well. I love Jerry yeah. Goldsmith's yeah. score. It's, re- it's really unnerving from the very, very first note when you see the credits appear and Alien gradually appears, you know, and bits of the letters appear. That that music's just fantastic. One of yeah, his best yeah. And the, the disc is just sumptuous. It's, it's absolutely spot on. So if you haven't got it yet, go buy it. It is fantastic. There you go. It does include the director's cut, but the, the footage from that is up res. It's not... Um, it wasn't restored from the negative as right. the rest of the film, as the original film was. Okay. But I would suggest don't watch. I don't think the director's cut is very good. I no. think you should left it alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I went straight to theatrical. I haven't, I haven't looked yeah. at the director's cut on the disc. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so that's our disc of the month. Streaming wise, um, there's a few things to talk about that it's coming out, and then we can wrap up with TV of the month. So, Kaz, tell us all about it. Oh, I, can I just put in Spider Verse as my disc of the month? You can. But I'm, but I'm only saying better. that because I'm really cynical. <laughs> I skipped Alien. I, I can't. After Ma- I got burnt with the Matrix, I can't be doing with uh, buying a box set and then flogging the disc. I'm just going to wait until they do the box set because there's no way they're just releasing Alien. Yeah, but we're, we're, do you think it's going to include all of them? I don't care as long do as it you... includes the first two. And well, why don't you just the buy the first? Because <laughs> yeah, if you're then having to spend out for three and then yeah, the they, they ones never as make well. it the same. They never Kaz, Kaz the hang same. on a minute, hang on a minute. You said you yeah. got burnt because you bought the Matrix box set. Why the hell did you buy the Matrix box set? You only I... buy the Matrix. Forget the other two. Yes, that's that's a, it is a fair point, but I'm kind of a completist, <laughs> so I, I would I would certainly like this. Aliens and Aliens Three. I haven't I, got a great deal of time. I am. Um, I'm a bit worried about Aliens because it, it's well known that the, the film stock 80s, that was used crap, and it was crap, stock. crap yeah. stock and yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I've said said this before. The greatest I've ever seen that was on Digi Beta at a uh, a showing at Abbey Road. It was just the most eighties thing in the history of the universe. It was fabulous. <laughs> Everything about it was perfection. But, yeah. but because I didn't get Alien, I would say Spider-Verse was the best disc. I mean, I loved revisiting Winter Soldier in 4K, but Spider-Verse was stunning visually. And the Atmos soundtrack, it's got one of the best scores that I've come across recently. Bass throughout, some fantastic tunes, some fantastic effects. Is it Serious so, Boss? <laughs> it's <laughs> Serious <laughs> Boss. Yeah. It's it on Aquaman. <laughs> 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 yeah, it trumps Aquaman. It trumps Aquaman. All right, streaming wise, let's let's crack on, Kaz. Sure, streaming wise, uh, we, we're talking about what's coming up or what I've done. Yeah, what's coming up? Oh God, we don't want to know what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, now TV, although, although Netflix have recent, recently optioned it as well, they're doing the Ted Bundy film, extremely wicked, shockingly evil and vile, which is coming out this. Friday. With, with Zach Efron, who looks with a Zac lot Efron. like he's really good cho- choice to well, play him. He looks like him. Yeah, but I mean, they. Yeah, yes, it's going to be interesting. Is it? Is it on? So when you say it's on Now TV, what is it on? Sky it's Sky. Movie? It's a Sky Original Cinema Original. But I, 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 it's interesting because Netflix have just bought the US rights to this. Yeah. So I, I'm curious as to what that means for now Sky's funding in it. Yeah, I think Sky, it's the usual Sky thing where they put it on uh, as a Sky original, but it's also getting a very limited cinema release as well. This yes. Week. So if you so. wonder what, if I want to watch it, do I have to pay extra for it? Or is it just part of my normal Now TV entertainment package? Part of your normal package. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just like that Serenity film, which was awful. Well, I quite fancy this. That's Friday. Cool. Okay. Suspiria, which I thought was coming out. On Friday, I'm pretty sure that was the original release date, magically appeared on Amazon in 4K. Now, the curious thing about this, and this is the remake, not the original 77 Dario Argento classic. This is the remake. Um, it is not getting a Blu-ray release or let alone a 4K release in the in the, in the UK. There's no DVD release. That's a worry. It's a really isn't it? thing for a modern title. It, it was part funded by Amazon, so I suspect that's oh, okay. why they've somehow got a coup. Um, it's nice that they've released it in 4K. It looks very nice. It looks like it was shot in the 70s, which I think was the aesthetic they were going for. Uh, it's a Marmite film, and I, the reason why I can tell that is because everyone else seems to love it, and I hate it. <laughs> good, but, um, good score. It was, I do uh, like the, the Tom York score, I think, is absolutely excellent. I'm actually yeah. looking forward to this. I, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite looking forward to this. It's, uh, it's a tough, long slog, I found. Um, and uh, it, it's very stylish, but 
I don't think the story that they're trying to tell is strong enough to go for two and a half hours. It's not Endgame. And I'm not even talking about action. It's just it, nothing happens for vast swathes of time. Pardon me. And, uh, and that, that got me down. <laughs> Sorry. I also wouldn't get on board with any of the characters. But I have to say, revelation here, I haven't never seen the original. So I can't tell whether that's yeah, right. cursed. Okay. Because, uh, because everyone seems to think that I'm com- complaining about it because it doesn't live up to the original. It's not, I've got no preconceptions. just didn't work for me. Okay, cool. And, and that's perfectly all right. You know, when it comes to films, films it, it, like comedy, it's very personal. And I think people understand that. But they'll, they'll always go on the internet and say they're right. It's just the internet in 2019. Uh, right, best TV of the month. Um, and I'll say straight away, um, I've got nine ad here. I, I yes, you just do. Have, do I? Oh yes, oh to... yes, yes, I do. So testing the, uh, the the Samsung TV, which now handily tells you when you're watching HDR10 plus. So yes, I wa- at so last. I, at last. So I handily watched Jeremy Clarkson crying in HDR10 plus, and can, mm. could confirm that. Um, Why was he crying? I because it's that the end is of an it. Era. End of an era. That's it. They're finished. Uh, oh, was, grand, that the, was that the last season? Then, the Grand no. Tour is finished. The, the, the Grand Tour is finished. They're not finished. So they're no. still going to do their travelling around the world and all that kind of thing. They haven't told us what the format's going to be yet, but it's not going to be the same format as the Grand Tour or Top Gear. They're moving away from, from that. Um, and I've got to say, the last two or three episodes of this series of Grand Tour, they got their old mojo back. Maybe it was because they knew that they were they were moving on and they, they put some effort in for a change. Yeah. Because the films have been fantastic this season. Uh, the historical stuff has been fantastic. And if that's what they're going to move on and do, then I think it'll be fantastic. Because that's what they do really well, is telling you a story about an aspect of motorsport, or an aspect of the cars last, or whatever. The last episode about... Ford family saloons, and yeah. it is it's it's very Ford heavy, and both Phil and I own Ford, and me and you know, I maintain you could watch it. It just it resonates. Mm. It deals very very elegantly with a part of you know with a part of society. Let's be you know it it, it ventures on this. It's the only time in in British politics where a car's been referenced with Mondeo Man and so on and so mm. forth. Yeah. It's really really well done. Yeah, um, and, and and the whole yeah, class was, society, they, they they actually nailed that. If you're a child of the seventies and, and early eighties, and yeah. and your parents worked for a a, a large company, um, they absolutely nailed that when it came to the company car and the type of company car that you drove dictated what your class level was, and that's the way things were. Probably sixties. I wasn't around in the 60s, but it's definitely 70s and 80s. I remember great pride in the fact that my dad was driving a certain model of car. Not the base model, not the highest model, but he was driving the sporty model. And that's all gone from society now. And if you're a car person, I think it's really, it hit home. It it really did hit home and it was emotional. And I and I understood why he burst into tears when he burst into tears. You know, it wasn't put on. He was genuinely emotionally upset. Um, and yeah, I've got to say the last three episodes are, are, the, we're back to what they could do. None of this arson around or, or the rest of it, or lame jokes and so on. They got back to doing what they were really good at. So if you're if you're a car fan in any way, I recommend the, the, this season of Grand Tour. It was really good, as the the last season of Top Gear was incredibly poor. Um, mm. So it, it was quite a contrast between these two series that run together, um, Top Gear and, and the Grand Tour. So yeah, if you haven't seen that, I'd forgotten about that. Thanks for reminding me, Ed. Uh, that's You're my welcome. recommendation. I haven't watched any other TV though, <laughs> sadly. Um, so let's move on to Ed. What have you watched on TV? Because you said you've been um, watching TV. I, I have been. Um, shall we ignore... Are we going to? Should we discuss Game of Thrones when it's done? We'll have to work out some way of turning off the person that audits the podcast. Should we just wait until? Should we wait until we've completed this final season before yeah, we talk about that? There's only four more to go, isn't there? Exactly. And right. If we ignore that, um, as most of you know, I like a good food program because you know I'm a fat bastard and I like a good food program. Uh, there is a Netflix season that's just gone up. Uh, series that's just gone up on street food. Mm-hmm. And it just delivers on every level, every single level. Some of the, as I say, Netflix's documentaries, the unsung heroes of that service, because they are far in advance of anything I see on Amazon. Um, 
they're 30 minutes a pop they're in dolby vision so they are they they pop on screen but there's an emotional content as well as just showing you food in ridiculous definition there it's a really fantastic series of programs absolutely brilliant to watch from start to finish so that it, it we will leave the throne business until it's done because it is it's monumental television there's no point getting away from that but we, 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 let's see how they decide you say to, that to, but last week's episode was entirely people sitting around in a room talking for it's an still hour monumental it te- it's still monumental television it's <laughs> this, without doing spoilers it's the same thing that appears to have made this latest avengers movie great it's the invested time in all of the people yeah, sat yeah having that conversation because you couldn't you couldn't do it any other way it's not it's not a case of uh, all of a sudden we can save some money it you, you you've got to have taken them on the journey that you've taken them for that episode to work but well that you're absolutely right last episode was good i'm looking forward to the next one but let's ignore it until it's done and see where it's see where it goes the netflix ser- uh, series on street food has been it's just a fabulous watch cannot recommend it highly enough I mean, if we're talking best TV of the month, are we, are we not considering Discovery season two? It was bloody being... awful, Discovery. <laughs> okay, well, that was are, are easily you, are... one of the worst TV series I've ever seen. I mean, oh, they spent an... what Discovery, Star Trek the, the Discovery. Ending, the ending, yeah, was appalling. Was it absolutely oh. appalling? I, I can't believe how bad that was. And I mean, it looks incredible. They spent staggering amounts of money on it. It was. Utterly ludicrous. Yeah, I just zoned out. Having said that, the Orville, brilliant. Have you finished the Orville, Phil? Is that on now TV? Yes. All right, I'll have to have a look. Yeah, but the Orville doesn't start. Hasn't got season one, so I haven't even managed to start the Orville. I, I actually love Discovery, I, and I think that it's because I don't compare it to what Star Trek should be. I know because I know it, just... it doesn't. It's just stupid. But I mean, it, I don't, it, it, it doesn't matter stupid. to me. I enjoyed that, the first season, but the second season just went off the jump to show. Did it? Because cause, I, um, I, I haven't got that far yet, and I'm really enjoying season two, so. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks well, for I, that. I, I absolutely loved it, Phil. I, I thought it was a tremendous season, and it's, you know, I think that uh, if they didn't make any more movies and they kept making Discovery, then I'd be more than happy with it. Although I, my vote would certainly be to have some kind of Chris Pike led enterprise spin-off at somewhere down the line because i i would much rather think, watch that yeah he's i think he's a great character and i i'd be really surprised if they didn't think about that because uh, uh, for for everything i do like about discovery burnham isn't one of them and she she doesn't carry the show at all and it's only a series of strong captains that have made it more watchable i'm not not saying that they haven't followed her around and and they the captains haven't been somewhere in the background but they're still strong captains uh, and i think that that's it it would be interesting if they just went you know what we're having fun with discovery but let's also do like an enterprise show with pike um, well if you want to watch star trek watch the orville it's brilliant uh, I do, and where, where where do you do this because now it, tv isn't on now tv second seasons on now tv well yeah 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 but so it's like Game of Thrones. It's like if you don't. Well, watch- yeah, I'm assuming oh, if you're too, if you didn't watch last season, there's not much point. But this season has been particularly good. Um, but it's basically Star Trek with the odd joke. Yes, you tell me every single week, but I can't watch it. <laughs> I you want to watch. To. They're standalone episodes. Just to jump in. They're one and done. Gents, I would really like to have my dinner. So if you wish to have um, this argument, right. can we do it after we? I'd, I'd recommend. I'd recommend Veep. Uh, again, it's on now. Um, this is season, the last season, uh, and obviously they had to deal with the fact that the Trump reality, uh, and they um, and they're managing to deal with it quite well, um, but by you know by making it even more ludicrous in real life. Um, but it's very funny and worth checking out. Good. Okay. Hooray. Um So finally, Carlos, what have you? What do you recommend for your best TV of the month? Well, I just got shut down for Discovery. <laughs> I mean, that's a, I, was a, I can't recommend that now. He, he, no, he's, he's, he's just a grumpy old man. Just ignore him like everybody else does. I, I really enjoyed that. I would, I would say that one of these days, someone making Star Trek really needs to, to rewatch Wrath of Khan when it comes to space battles. <laughs> because like the Wrath of Khan Hunt for, Hunt for Red October style naval battle is where it is when you're doing starships in space. I've I got to be honest. There's it's... something about that. Yeah. If you if you want lots of little little things pinging around at yeah. eight million miles an hour, you watch Star Wars. Yeah, I do. I do not understand this this obsession with this miniature nanotech thing. I, I think it's a, analogous to 
um, the bad guy in uh, Ter- Terminator Genesis. Like, I don't care that he's made of a million tiny little particle nanobytes or whatever. It's nowhere near as threatening. And so in, in this, I think that they went overkill in that. It was a spectacular s- set piece, but I did, it did make me sit there and go, think 3D. But like I was in, like I was Spock and Kirk in in Wrath of Khan. I mean, they they needed to to think outside the box and think like they're two submarines battling it out because that was so well done. Mm. But I, but my vote would be, I, I mean, I really really loved that season. It was very, I thought it was very well put together. I wasn't hampered by its ties to the past. I thought they were quite well done. I loved Christopher Pike and Anson Mount. I thought he's great as Chris Chris Pike. And um, I really, really came around to Spock. I wasn't sure about him being a part of the, a part of the whole thing. I really came around to it and found Burnham occasionally even toler- tolerable, which is a step up from last season. Um, I, I thought I, it made me think I'm not worried about them not making any more movies. Okay, uh, so that wraps up all our TV stuff. We did have another subject to go into. We're not going to go into it because we've basically outstayed our welcome yet no, again absolutely. so that so that's it for the podcast ed's getting hungry now so he's gonna get moody so i think we better move on um so my thanks to ed ed selly i understood that reference Kaz, hello. apparently i'm volatile self self apparently i'm volatile self hmm? <laughs> <laughs> one small with feeling fantastic yeah Let's go something shorter Better than last week apparently i'm volatile self obsessed and don't play well with others that's usually Steve and Steve with us. Raise the mizzen mast, jib the top sails. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, bookmarkavforums.com for latest reviews, news and videos. Plus, why not leave us a five-star rating on iTunes, but only if you enjoyed the show. Also, head over and check out our YouTube channel for videos on the latest product launches and reviews. And while you're there, feel free to subscribe. I'm Phil Hinton. Thank you very much for listening. And we're not here next week. We're back on the 13th and we'll see you then. Bye.